So we left off at simply creating a uh, binary tree with only three nodes, but we didn't really look at how to iterate over it, right? We only basically printed elements of it, but what if, you know, what if there is more to it? What if instead of this binary tree, what if we have a few more nodes? So suppose our binary tree would be like this. Um, how will we go about actually printing all the elements? Sure, we can go ahead and change the code every single time the binary tree changes, but what if, for example, you know, what if we add the uh, root of left of left, right? There's this node with the value of three, we print it, and uh, what if it actually doesn't exist, right? Well, we have to find a way to iterate over the binary tree, well, to either print all the elements or to simply search for an element for a specific value. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to do this. All right, so suppose this is our binary tree. Um, for binary trees, it's a bit more difficult because Remember when we talked about linked lists, it was very straightforward, right? We had just one direction to go to. Uh, it was just from the root element to the tail element, and that was it. How do we think about iterating a binary tree? Well, in this diagram, the binary tree kind of has two dimensions, right? It has a depth, right? And it has a sort of length to it. And we can think about algorithms that uh, iterate over either one of those dimensions. One. So the first way of iteration is from top to bottom, right? We start from here and we go down. What does that basically mean? Well, we first iterate over this root node and then we iterate over one and two and only later we iterate over three, four, five, and six. And if, three, if either three, four, five, or six have descendants, we iterate over them after all of these and so on and so forth. So how would uh, the iteration over this binary tree would look like if we iterate from top to bottom? Well, the first element would be zero, right? Then you would iterate one, then you would iterate two, right? Then three, four, five, and six, right? And this one is actually called breath first search, BFS. We're gonna abbreviate it as BFS. Now there is one more dimension that we can iterate over and that is the length dimension. So we can iterate from left to right basically. But as it turns out, um, we cannot really start with the node three because we simply don't have it, right? If we go back to our code, we literally just have this root node and we have to do, we have to access things from this root node onwards. So in either way, we're gonna have to actually start with this node, right? This is gonna be our first node, this is zero, right? And what this iteration method does, it basically goes to the uh, leftmost node first. So it goes zero, one, and three, right? Zero, one, and three. And only then it iterates from left to right. So basically from here, it goes up a level. Well, we have iterated our one again, so we can only go to four, right? It iterates over four, it takes a look at it, nothing special. Then it goes up a level again because there's nothing more. And then we iterate over two. And then we iterate over five. And then we iterate over six. So this method of iteration is called depth first search, right? It wasn't truly from left to right, correctly, because we have gone to two before going to five, but it is because the node two is the parent of five, but this depth first search simply because we first go as deep as possible inside the binary tree, and then we try to iterate the rest, right? If we were to, for example, search for the element, oh, I don't know, let's say four, right? We would just go zero, then one, then three, and then four, and we'll stop there. And as you might notice, the other half of the binary tree wouldn't even have been touched at all. It was as if it didn't exist. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to implement a depth first search. All right, but how do we actually do this? Well, it might be complicated at first, but if we take into consideration a data structure that we have talked about in the past, we can easily implement this, namely the stack data structure. If we have a stack, we can easily create the depth first search iteration. So how do we start? Well. First things first, we're gonna create a stack that has the root node on it, right? The root node will gonna be zero, right? And here's how we're gonna proceed. First things first, take out the node that exists, right? At the top of the stack. 
In this case, it's our root node. That's the only node. Next, do whatever operation you need with the value. In our case, we're just going to print it. So simply just print the value zero. Perfectly fine. And third, take a look at its um, descendants. If it has a left descendant, put it on the stack. If it has a right descendant, also put that on the stack. Right. So instead of uh, zero, we're going to have on the stack, we're going to have two, one. I'm going to put them in this order simply because the next one I'm going to extract is going to be one. So first we're going to put in this on the stack the right descendant, and then we're going to put on the stack the left descendant. And next up, of course, we're going to take out another element from the stack. In this case, it's going to be one, and we're going to print the one on the console in our case, but you can do whatever you want with this value. This is the process step and really that's where the magic happens basically. Um, and after that, you're simply going to take a look at its descendants. If it has any, push them back on the stack. So we're going to do instead of one, we're going to have, I'm going to say four and then three. All right. So we're going to have four and then three on the stack. And next we're going to take a look at three, of course. And since three doesn't actually have any descendants, we're simply going to take it out, print it on the screen and not put anything back on the stack. And as you can see, the stack has shrinked. And same thing for four. We're going to just take it out and not put anything on the stack. So we're going to have two. And with this algorithm, well, actually, let's finish this whole algorithm because we're already almost close to finishing it. Uh, What's the next step? Of course, take out the element, print it on the screen and take a look at the descendants. We do have descendants. As you might notice, we have five and six here. So of course, we're going to put back, in this case, six and five. All right. And then we're going to take a look at five, print it and notice that it doesn't have any descendants. We're not going to put anything back on the stack. I have six here. And as for the six, same thing. At which point the stack is empty. And when the stack is empty, we know that we have finished iterating over the whole uh, binary tree. So this whole process can be actually implemented as a loop, right? All we have to do is first look at uh, our stack. If it's empty, then start processing. Processing what? First take the top element, then print it on the screen, print the value of that top element on the screen, and then add its descendants back onto that stack right from right to left in this case and repeat this basically until you don't have any more elements on the stack now let's try to implement this in c right so i'm going to create here a function that's not going to return anything it's just going to be a function called print depth first let's call it and it's going to take in as an argument the root element right that's something that we want Okay, so the first thing we have to do is to create this stack, but what's this stack actually? What's it going to store? Is it, an, is it a stack of integers? Well, not really, because the process of printing works perfectly fine, but when we take that element, we need to know its descendants. So we need actual pointers in this stack. We need, we need pointers to this three node structure that we have. So we simply create a stack of three node pointer type. We're gonna call it, uh, let's say process stack. Right, and I'm going to make it, uh, let's say, a size of 100. So this is very important to know that, right, if you have a binary tree that's higher, that's larger than 100 nodes, this is going to crash. So you might have to um, change this. You might have to dynamically allocate this stack. That's perfectly fine. But for now, I'm just going to show you the, the basics. And next, we need a number that keeps track of how many elements there are. I can use here int, let's say process stack num right i'm gonna call i'm gonna initialize this with zero and we can change this to from an int to a size t this is more appropriate because it is actually a size right we're not gonna have negative numbers of uh, elements inside our stack so that's perfect fine as you might have noticed from our diagram here um the stack has been initialized already with the root node so i'm gonna actually have to put that root node inside the stack before starting the loop how do we do this? Well, we can simply say process stack of zero equals root. And later we, we have to increase, increment this number. So I'm gonna say process stack num 
plus plus. And finally, we can actually start the loop. So we're gonna say while our process stack num variable, that's the one that holds um, the information about how many elements are on the stack. If, uh, if this is higher than uh, zero, then we know that we are on the right track, right? So we're gonna iterate over this until we don't have any more elements to iterate over, literally. Right, now, how do we take an element from the stack? Well, as you might have noticed, if we have 10 elements on the stack, we always take the last one, right? If we have 11 elements, we take the 11th one and so on and so forth, right? In our case, uh, since process stack num holds the number of elements, if we access the process stack num minus one index of that, <laughs> of this uh, array, we're gonna end up with the last element, which is perfectly fine for us. So we have here three node current, I'm gonna call this variable current, and it's gonna be process stack of process stack num minus one. Now we have taken an element from the stack, but we should also change the uh, process stack num because after all, we actually have taken that element and no longer is useful for us. So you can say here, process stack num minus minus. That's perfectly fine. Next, we get uh, to the step of processing. In our case, it's just printing on the screen. So I'm just gonna say printf percent this space and that's going to be current arrow value. So we're just gonna print the current value, literally. Next, and basically the last step is to take a look at the descendants. And if, if it has any descendants, if the current node has any descendants, add them on the stack. What does take a look mean in CD syntax? As you might have remembered, we initialized left and right to be null by default. That means that basically we don't have any elements as descendants for this node that we are creating. So we can use this null value to denote that, no, we don't have any descendants. What are you talking about, right? So we can just say here, if current arrow, in this case, right, doesn't equal null, then add the element to the stack. We know that if it's not null, we can add it to a stack. So how do we do that? We can simply say process stack of what? Well, we know that process stack num minus one is our last element. Then that means that process stack num and basically adding one to that is going to be the first empty slot of that uh, stack. So we can simply say uh, process stack num equals current arrow right. And in actuality, if this is uh, if this condition is true, we are really replacing the current node uh, from the stack with this with its right node, right? Because process stack num was process stack num minus one when we before taking out any of the the, the current elements, really. All right, and one more thing we have to do is to increment this. So we can say process stack num plus plus because we have added an element to it. And for the left side, it's literally the same thing. All we have to do is just copy and paste it. And I'm just gonna replace right with left. And there we go. So let's go here and uh, replace these print apps. We're gonna change this to be print depth first, and I'm gonna call it with the root element. And one more thing, I would like the binary tree to look the same as the one we have in the diagram. So I'm going to add a few nodes. I'm gonna say root of left, which one? That is the node with the value one. And the left of it, I want another new node that has the value three on it, okay? And uh, its neighbor, the right of, it is going to be, uh, oops, it's gonna be value four. And right of left, what is what is uh, root of right? Root of right is the node with the value two. And at the left of it, I want the value five and its neighbor, the value six. All right, now if we try to compile and launch this, you're going to see zero, one, three. So zero, one, three, and then four, and then two, five, six. That is as expected, as we have expected here. Zero, one, three, four, two, five, six. Now, something that is very important to note here is this print statement. This print statement can be replaced with anything you'd like. This is the processing stage. I am using it here just to denote certain things, but um, the, the name of the video is called the depth first search, right? It's not depth first print. So in our case, we can change this to be an if statement and change this whole iteration to be simply a, uh, a search algorithm, right? So we can say here, instead of, well, we can just say here an if, let's say current var, let's say equals four, right? Let's say we're searching for the fourth node. So let's print here, oh, I don't know, let's say printf, 
uh, let's put the current value here, but let's put it in parentheses, say, I don't know, yay, we found the node four. And we're gonna put still a space and we're gonna say here current arrow val. Or we can put four b because we know already what it is. And in an else statement, we're gonna just gonna put this printf here. That's perfectly fine. If we launch this, now as you can see, uh, the iteration does continue right after four, but we can make it stop continuing by just simply uh, breaking or simply returning out of it. And as you can see, the program actually stops after four, we just break out of the while loop and we finish execution and everything is deallocated and very nicely done. And here, of course, you can return the, the current node, you can do all sorts of things. We're gonna see later on um, how we can make use of that. For now, I just wanted to show you how to iterate um, the binary tree using the depth first search algorithm. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Again, the source code can be found in the description below. Take care, bye.